licensing, merchandising for uh, French and European right holders. Uh, I could mention uh, French League One clubs like uh, Lille, Nantes, Rennes, the French, uh, the French uh, Rugby Union professional championship uh, called uh, Top 14. Uh, some uh, big uh, European uh, cups like the European professional rugby clubs uh, championship. Uh, I work also for the French Olympics Committee uh, and some of our uh, rugby union clubs in France. Uh, I raised the, comp the company from scratch in uh, 2005 now to uh, to uh, to have uh, 17 employees working for me uh, and which are working for um, position like uh, license manager licensing manager uh, brand brand manager retail manager e-commerce manager digital ma manager etc etc uh, so the main uh, objective, uh, objective of my lecture uh, now for two years, I started last year at the uh, Inerture uh, offices. Uh, uh, my, the, the main subject is how to uh, engage more and more fans through uh, a better brand management program and uh, operationally uh, to put in place and to implement a licensing and or uh, merchandising program. So my lessons are talking about uh, how to build up a strong brand. It could be a domestic brand, it could be a, a, a continental brand, or it could be a global brand. Uh, in my lecture, we uh, uh, speak uh, a lot about uh, of course, uh, the uh, European football uh, club uh, branding management, um, French, English, German, Italian, Spanish, etc. And uh, I, uh, I introduced my lessons with a, a, a global benchmark about the sports marketing and how it works uh, in licensing and merchandising for big markets like, uh, like uh, United States or United Kingdom or France or Germany, etc. Uh, we start all, we start by brand management to then talk about um, talk about what is merchandising, what, what what we call merchandising, what is the definition of merchandising, uh, what what engages uh, merchandising uh, through uh, everything regarding sports marketing, and uh, the last point uh, is to uh, talk about uh, licensing and how to. Imagine and how to implement uh, uh, an ambitious uh, sports licensing rights uh, program. Uh, uh, we will talk also about uh, all uh, everything regarding uh, kit supplier deals. Uh, may I mention, for example, the most valuable uh, sports marketing contract for a football club with Real Madrid with 102 million euro per, per year. So we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we will talk about uh, this kind of subjects through my lecture. Uh, so uh, during the week of my lecture, we speak about a lot uh, um, about a European football club, especially the English one, uh, because we, maybe this is the first and uh, the, the most visionary club that engage uh, fan engagement, uh, marketing, sports marketing, and that have built their own brands through the world for a long time. Uh, the, the, majority, the big majority of uh, English football clubs uh, have been involved in uh, the their, brand, their brand development uh, in Asia, for example, India, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, Oceania, for a long time, and it began at the end of the 90s. So, for the for for, for that from that since that time, sorry, since that time, uh, the English are really far forward uh, compared to uh, all the all European uh, football clubs like uh, the, the the Spanish, uh, the um, the uh, the Italian, and uh, if I can mention the German and the French. Um, ah, so it started. Yeah. 
for our uh, and thank you for okay so uh, I don't know if you have heard about uh, my uh, speech before uh, if you want to read like a little bit but uh, the subject of my lecture is uh, speaking about um, how to build uh, a brand, brand that could be a, a local that could be a global brand so um, about marketing rights uh, and especially uh, the European football big clubs. Mentioning uh, European big marketing, uh, big football clubs, uh, we'll, we'll do a special focus on the Martian Martian United program. <laughs> Why? Because uh, the English clubs are, are the, the first who have a uh, get involved in their brand de developments through the world and they are the first who have engaged some uh, some operation uh, all around the world, especially in Asia, India, Malaysia, China, Hong Kong, etc. So uh, because they started uh, earlier than all the others, that's why uh, one of the most valuable football brands in the world are coming from UK, if I can mention the port, uh, most valuable sport franchise in the world. You can find Manchester United at the third position, just behind the Dallas Cowboys and uh, the New York Yankees. Uh, in the top, in the top 20, you may find some big brands like uh, Arsenal, like Chelsea, like Liverpool FC or Tottenham. Uh, so why the English clubs are uh, maybe the most um, or the wealthiest uh, uh, football clubs in the world because we see the one that have uh, started their brand management, management before everyone. Uh, maybe the English clubs are the oldest one, but they also started to work earlier, uh, earlier than any other country in Europe. So if I have to uh, mention uh, the figures that uh, uh, can get you a picture of what is the business of a club like Manchester United. Uh, um, let me engage the PowerPoint presentation. Ma Ma Manchester Man Ma Ma merchandising in terms of figures and when uh, it started. It started at the end of the 80s. Why? Because they had, they had known the liberalization on the player transfer market. So more than any other clubs in Europe, Manchester United was the very first who tried to get some other uh, nation uh, players uh, like French, like uh, Dutch, like German, uh, like uh, Argentinian. Why? Because it was a way to uh, stretch the brand all over the world by being present in other country because big players coming from other country uh, can engage more TV rights or uh, more watched uh, around the world. So for the awareness of the brand, it was the first step to uh, to build a, a strong ground uh, globally. Um, that, that foreign players recruitment uh, gave the club the opportunity to get worldwide exposure and appeal. That was the very first step of the brand building. And uh, uh, at the mid of the 90s, uh, especially in 1996, because of Euro 96 that, will, uh, uh, that have been uh, organized in the UK, uh, they, uh, they, they get profit from the refit uh, of Old Trafford to have a brand new club, but also to engage some uh, new uh, facilities and new infrastructure to make more business. Uh, around food and beverage, around hospitalities, around merchandising, and and uh, also um, um, licensing uh, by the development of new category of products. So uh, to mention that Manchester United is uh, one of the biggest mega store in the, in the world regarding uh, the space dedicated to uh, to merchandising, with uh, one thousand and and five hundred. 50 square meters. Uh, this is one of the biggest in the world um, with uh, FC Barcelona and Bayern Munchen. Uh, they also developed uh, their own TV channel, uh, 
launched uh, partnerships with uh, foreign countries like China, uh, like Malaysia, like Hong Kong, everywhere in the world. Why? Because they, uh, their objective, their main goal was to engage more exposure. The exposure gives more awareness and awareness gives more sales. Uh, to, get, to give you some figures, uh, the global licensing and merchandising turnover uh, for Manchester United is 117 million euro or uh, 100 and, uh, 105 uh, million pounds. Uh, it was the 17 uh, figures at the end of the 16, 17 figures that place that places Manchester United one of the most valuable franchises uh, in the world with a uh, uh, worth of uh, $4 billion, uh, the last uh, Forbes classification, second just behind uh, the, the last Cowboys. So uh, what I can uh, tell is uh, uh, the best you uh, built uh, your brand correctly and you build a strong bases uh, around uh, brand, brand management, the more you will sell some products or services. This is the core, uh, the core, the main objective of my lecture to work upon uh, the brand management, to define what could be the identity of your sports uh, club, your sports league or your sports project and then uh, to engage uh, everything regarding business and particularly for licensing and merchandising. Uh, from my point of view, uh, you cannot uh, be profitable and you cannot expect making some money regarding licensing and merchandising if you don't have developed your own brand uh, and for a long time. Um, uh, brand management is a long-term strategy, this is not short-term, so you have to be patient, you have to uh, go step by step, but uh, when you work like this, uh, money came and uh, the money come and the money come uh, uh, wider and stronger. Just a few, uh, we just, yes, ju just to tell you that almost 20% of the overall turnover uh, for Manchester United comes through licensing and merchandising. Uh, just uh, take the opportunity to tell you that only the top five to 10 uh, big clubs in, in the world can expect uh, uh, getting more than 20% of their overall turnover uh, through merchandising and licensing. The majority of uh, football clubs and football rights in general uh, only can expect uh, uh, from 10 to 15% of their overall turnover regarding uh, uh, licensing and merchandising. So only the big brand, the big global brands can have this kind of amount and this, this kind of part of, uh, of licensing and merchandising in their overall turnover. Uh, also to mention that in my lecture, we will talk about maybe half a day, uh, um, uh, all, all the kit supplier uh, contracts uh, that have been negotiated by the biggest club in the world uh, with a focus on the amount, the focus, the focus on the, the quantity of jersey they expect to send with the, the real figures. I always mention real figures, this is not uh, uh, dreamed, dreamt or uh, imagined uh, figures. This is the figures I can catch from every kind, every part of the market. So you will, uh, you will know what uh, are the figures for, for uh, talking about sales. Uh, regarding uh, clubs like Real Madrid, Mach Manchester United, Bayern Munich, Paris Saint-Germain, etc., etc. Um, some numbers. Next year it will be. It will be. Uh, I think it won't be the same figures for Manchester United. Maybe better. Uh, one uh, one million and three hundred and fifty million jerseys sold all around the world. Uh, last season, 17-18. Uh, uh, just to, to mention and to precise that uh, the figure I, I give you is uh, the sell-in. That means this is the number of uh, jerseys that have been sold to retailers, not the final consumer. 
Um, you've got uh, one of the biggest uh, kit supplier uh, contract with Adidas until 2025, 88 million euro, or it's about um, it's about uh, 77, 78 million pounds a year. This is not the most expensive of the most variable kit supplier contract, but this is the one of the best on the market. Uh, we can say that the retail shop, uh, what I called you before, uh, the, the biggest store in Old Trafford uh, uh, um, is, is worth uh, 22 million euro turnover per year. So you, you can know up and downs, man, but the average is around that figures. So you can imagine what can be the volumes of products that have been sold in the mega store every year and uh, regarding e-commerce we are talking about 30 to 35 million euro per season uh, mentioning that uh, the uh, exclusive and uh, the official operator for Manchester United all around the world is uh, an American company uh, named uh, Fanatics. Uh, the licensing program engaged uh, around 35 uh, licensee uh, worldwide and that covers all category of products uh, for a global turnover around 18 million uh, uh, euro uh, global turnover. Uh, these 18 million euro are just uh, uh, around uh, royalty uh, uh, and not not this is not the the turnover for retail at retail price. This is just a percent stage of overall uh, sales. So this is what uh, everything I can mention regarding the uh, the Manchester figures or the Manchester United economy. And uh, what I can tell you is uh, uh, during my uh, my lecture uh, at the sports uh, marketing MBA from AEG, uh, we will. Uh, have more focuses on the uh, other clubs like Man uh, like Manchester United. We will talk about uh, Real Madrid, Mas Barcelona. We can talk about the NBA case study. Uh, we can uh, mention the NFL. We can mention the Champions League, the FIFA World Cup, etc. Uh, uh, everything regarding how you can after after your studies maybe engage something around sports and uh, uh, building a brand that could be uh, profitable uh, in the next few years. This is the end of my speech. I don't know if you have any uh, Q&A. Uh, yes, um, uh, you can expect a lot of jobs in, uh, regarding licensing and merchandising because this is one of the most uh, increasing function regarding sports marketing. So you can expect having uh, some jobs like licensing manager, brand manager. If you, uh, if you like retail or, uh, or shops, you can uh, start a career as a, as a sales uh, person and then become a retail manager. Or maybe if you are di more digital, you can, uh, you can start as an e-commerce manager. So there is a lot of opportunities in merchandising and uh, that could be everywhere in the world. This is the a really um, uh, quick uh, quick pace uh, increasing uh, function through uh, sports merchandising. Uh, Kabir, uh, the scope of merchandising in India, uh, 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 to be to be transparent and honest, I don't know very well the uh, the Indian market, but uh, everything I can uh, I can propose in my lecture uh, should be uh, should be adapted to the Indian market. It could be IPL, it could be ISL, it could be uh, I I League, it could be football, cricket, or kabaddi, or, or whatever the sport could be. Uh, the main rules are the same everywhere in the world, um, and uh, uh, my lecture. Uh, gives you all the marketing tools and all the marketing vision to engage uh, in, in India. Uh, just with um, a mention regarding India that uh, licensing should be may maybe more mature in a few years whenever the distribution, uh, uh, the channels of distribution uh, distribution should be more, uh, more mature uh, uh, around the country. But everything regarding my lecture uh, is, a, is a 
is adapt adaptable uh, to the Indian market. So, um, if you don't have any more questions uh, regarding the licensing and merchandising lecture from myself, uh, may I say uh, thank you for your kind attention and if you want any more information regarding uh, the, the sports marketing and the sports management MBA program here in India, uh, maybe you should contact uh, the, the school directly and ask your question by email. Thank you for all. Bye.